Hi everyone, I'm glad to see you here today. Um, it's um, family day today, so I uh, got to stitch quite a bit today and I thought I'll turn on the camera and uh, do a little bit of a stitch with me. Um, so this is the second stitch with me of the, I'm going at the park, um, but the park um, project. It's a, a big haid um, and I've stitched so far about 400 stitches today um, and I'm working at the uh, bottom right corner right here. So, oh, sorry, I locked the focus so it doesn't keep on auto-focusing, but hopefully you can see it uh, in here. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the first one. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one. I grab a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and um, let's stitch together. And um, okay, let me see. I'm gonna pick up the colors first. So I have everything on a floss drops like this. Um, at the moment it's okay. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to work once I have all the 90 colors in rotation. Uh, but so far it's nice uh, just to have it available. I used to work with um, with bobbins um, and that got really old really fast uh, with putting the floss on it, taking it off. Every time I would take out colors, it would be like 15 bobbins on the table. Um, then I would have to put them back and rearrange them. So I transitioned to the floss drops a couple of weeks ago. Um, so far, so good. So it's kind of difficult choosing how to organize floss both for projects as well as just general general storage. Um, if any of you remember, I mentioned in the first video that I don't like to spread myself too thin. So if I have works in progress or whips, it's usually just a two or three of those and mainly they consist from big projects and one small on the go. Oh, that's right at the edge. Hopefully you guys can see it. All right, I'm gonna stop talking and uh, get going with the work here. So if you see me pause, um, that's when I usually look at the pattern um, on the phone here on the side. I just rearrange things around and look at where to where to go next. So
So for anyone who's here for the first time, I'm going to just outline a couple of technical details about this work. Um, I'm working on a 16 count Ada uh, by Zweigart. It's uh, antique white, so just a little bit off white. Um, the stitch count, I believe, is 500 and something over 300 and something. Um, so the total count of stitches is 185,000. I started this work, or this project, um, at the beginning of January. I'm not sure if I mentioned that in the previous video, but here I am now. And in total, I have, this is the 29th stitching day that I'm working on this project uh, since I started. I'm hoping to do another about 45 minute uh, session for today. I like to work in short bursts. Um, well, that's actually relative. Some people, 45 for them is a too much. For others, that's very little. Uh, for me, it's kind of like a middle. Uh, so I do something between the 45 minutes and an hour and a quarter. Um, I find it's important to step away and move around and just kind of like change positions and not sit in the same posture, with the same posture for too long. Um, yeah, so this is a, a painting by George Seurat. I think that's a, the name. Um, and it's charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, they're quite popular. Lots of people stitch stitch their stuff. Um, it's my first Hade, so I'm giving it a try. It's also my first large full coverage, so I'm giving that a try as well. So far I'm enjoying this. Um, It's been a little bit um, it takes a while for the progress to appear uh, just because it's such a big area in here so big chunks of green the big dress um, so I'm not really getting much detail uh, yet and I don't really have a method for how I stitch. So you'll see I just jump around and try to find my path um, and I go where the color leads me. The only thing is that I pick up colors in the order of how they appear in the rows. Um, and I try to do page at a time, uh, but I have here one page and I think that's the edge page so it's sort of like a little bit shorter. Um, and then this is the edge of the second page, so I'm kind of like uh, going upwards with those um, two pages parallel. I think that's what I'll do uh, until I reach the top and then I'll go back to the bottom and work my way upwards uh, with the second row of two pages. almost at the end of it. So I'm going to pin it in here. Alright. So right now I'll be working somewhere in this area because I'm looking at the pattern and right here, so right in this area is exactly where the page is and I think this is the lowest, the lowest stitch that I have on this page. Everything else is sort of filled in so I'm going to choose whatever color this is, um, which happens to be a dark purple 
and I'll just move, work my way upwards with that. So to take out floss out of those drops, I just hook a single, single thread and I pull it. And if it's stuck, which it happens sometimes if it's too long, then I just pull one strand at a time. And then I straighten this back out. It's not too fuzzy. And then I take the first edge and then I just hold my finger and run the thread along. So what that does, it straightens it out. So it reduces the amount of twisting that will happen in the future. I put those two together and then I straighten it back. And of course, when I'm on camera, I'm gonna have a knot because aren't we always, there it is, that wasn't too bad. And then I hold it with one finger, I hold my needle with the other finger, well, the same finger actually. With my other hand, I just hold the needle thread, and then I go needle, floss, pull it out, here I am, ready to go look, make a look. to readjust here the the frame There's something fluffy picking, poking out through here.
Let me just check something. Yeah. I had a knot in here, so something felt a little bit too volumetric. Sometimes if you're not careful or don't pay attention, you might have micro knots developing on the back. And it's always better to untangle them in time before it's too late because then it just makes it more complicated to have adjacent stitches um, being stitched in the future. It's almost like a sixth sense um, when you can feel how long your thread should be and if you pull it through and it's it feels a little bit shorter you're probably right um, but yeah I find it just intuitively I guess muscle memory maybe you kind of like remember how much you should have or how long you should be pulling. But if it feels a little bit off, most often I'm right and it's off because there's a knot or something got caught. It used to happen to me quite often when I was working on uh, smaller projects uh, in a hoop. Um, the thread would just get caught on the on the fabric on the corners and would pull it in. And then you have to stop your work and fix it up. But that's one of the things that's nice with uh, the Q snaps and working in the center with a big canvas. Whenever I'm having fluff like this happen, I have this tool um, and it's like a needle, it's quite sharp on this side. Uh, but it's got like, um, like a texture on, on this side, I think you can see it. There's the glossy part and there's the textured. And if I pull it through, it catches the fluff and pulls it back. And usually within one or two of passes, um, Everything is resolved.
I will need to remember to put the half stitches on on all of them all of them when I come back. True story, it happens sometimes that I forget and then I find half a stitch somewhere. I keep on thinking I can like I can collect larger and larger areas. I suppose it's fine if you still have a lot of thread left, so you know you'll be able to make it back. I wouldn't do such risky stuff when the thread is shorter, when I'm towards the end of it. Okay, now I need to find on the pattern how long did I travel. I got it. You know when you go on a on a hike or on a walk and you know it's a there and back and it's not a loop so you want to keep on going because you see all those interesting things and you want to keep on exploring but in the back of your mind you know the further I go I have to backtrack all of that back. Do I have the energy to do it again? We have a very energetic dog, um, so we like to go hiking a lot. Um, she likes to pick up sticks. I think most dogs like sticks. She likes to chew the bark off the sticks. Like the more bark, the better. And of course, if she sees bark, she'll just pick up the bark. And, um, choose it off the off the sticks. As long as she doesn't eat it, I don't mind. It actually cleans their teeth, so it's good. But yeah, if you have a dog who's energetic, well, they're not gonna stop. And if you ask them, do you want to go more? They'll say, of course. They'll always find energy. Until they come back home and then they crash and sleep for two days. So you might be wondering, how come the gray color ran out so quickly and this purple is endless? Well, you're not wrong. I uh, didn't measure when I was cutting the floss. And I also had some leftovers from the, from the bobbins. Um, so the lengths that I have are not even. So I work with what I've got but this purple one I think is the longest the longest one and yeah feels like infinity sometimes especially in this area but where there is there is a lot of places where that floss can go it's quite heavy heavy on the purple 
with the dress. So. Let's see. Better fix that before it jumps out of here. So you see, what? why is this happening? Why is one side shorter than the other? I think I asked this question in the previous, in the previous stitch with me. I think I know the answer, but how to fix it? If anyone has an idea, please help. I think it's the way that I hold the needle and how I rotate it before inserting and after taking it out, uh, which causes um, one side to cut corners, like track and field. Now I'll just do those two. Then I'll finish kind of ready to move on to something new. Okay, so next, let's see what we're going to do next. Okay, so next I actually have this stitch right here on the very edge. Now let me just check which color this is, because I don't think I have it on my fast drop yet. So this whole entire border is incredibly confetti heavy. Um, if anyone knows the history of the painting, which I didn't know about that at the time. So anyhow, I'm just gonna skip this one and I'll do this later because I don't have the color on my floss drop. So I'm just going to move on to, um, back in here. Let me just figure out which color this is and I'll tell the story. So when the artist, George, I think it was George, um, he knew, I believe he knew, that the painting is going to be um, in a white frame and to uh, mimic the shadow as if the painting is sitting inside, inside of a frame, um, he created this border around. Now if you look from up close, it looks like a whole bunch of pinks and purples and, and red colors, but from a distance, with the illusion of the um, art as a whole, as well as the area where it's located and the frame, it would look as if the art is inside the frame, so it has that shadow depth to it. So whoever designed this chart, I think her name is Michelle something, um, she's the one who designs the charts for Heaven and Earth, um, chose to include it as part of the chart. Uh, so you can imagine this big border that just goes all the way across the whole entire piece. And it's just speckles of color. There is 
so much of it, no rhythm or rhyme. And when you're looking at it from up close, it does not make any sense. So fingers crossed <laughs> that at the end of it all, <laughs> it's going to actually have that effect, or at least a similar effect. So let's see. So basically what I'm faced with right now is I have a single stitch in here and then jumps all the way in here. Now I'm going to be jumping over some stitched areas, some not stitched areas, so I think that would be okay. So my concern is I don't want to have too much, um, too many of those loose stretched um, threads in the back because if they get caught on something, then they start pulling on the stitches. But because don't want to repin it twice and it's going to be going over some not stitched areas those future stitches will cover that stretch and it's going to be a bit more secure so let's see I think let me just confirm where I'm going so from here I'm gonna go all the way here because I have those two stitches here or I can go from here to here and then go down and then I have this pillar and then it goes in circle like this. I think that's what I'll do. That makes a little bit more sense. So I'm actually going to go in here first. So go upwards. So where was that stitch? Was it somewhere here, right? This one. So from here, well, here I can pull it open. So this part, nothing is going to secure it, but I still have a lot of stuff to stitch in here. So all of those stitches will eventually conceal this part um, and hopefully that'll be okay. I'm just going to move the the stand in here. So there was that one stitch here, and then I jump back inside. Oh nice, I'm gonna cover up a pin. I like doing that, it makes me feel more secure. So I tend to stitch and wash something, um, except for now. I'm actually filming now, so I'm not watching anything other than myself. But um, I like to watch other floss tube um, channels and, and videos and sort of like fill up my time with 
a little bit of multitasking. Um, so my question to you is, what are you stitching while watching this video? If you're stitching anything, um, uh, what are you doing? So comment below and it's always interesting to to know what others are doing and sometimes come across some new designs and new patterns that I haven't heard before. So let's help each other out and en enrich each other's horizons by sharing which projects are we working on. And then I go all the way up here. So you must be curious, what does the back look like with all this jumping around? And don't worry, I will show you. Oh, look at that. Did you see this? Do you see this? This is half a stitch. That's a half stitch I forgot to close. Should I close it with this color? I think I should. myself red-handed. Let's see. Oh, that's better. That's better. So there's a very, very sharp edge right here um, where this color ends and the gray color ends. I suspect that's where the dark green ends and then there's a patch of lighter green. Um, so that's exciting. I've been dealing with very dark colors for a while now, so it'd be quite refreshing to have something a little bit lighter. All right, moving on to the next. So I think it's probably somewhere here or here, but let me just, let me just check. Oh no, look what happened again. Do you see this? And that's a half stitch I didn't finish. What a day. <laughs> What a day. I think I stitched a lot already today, so I'm starting to have slips. Yeah, so that's this one. And this is another shade of gray. This one is a little bit darker, so I'll just find it.
Sorry about that. That's beautiful. I did such a good job. I'm just moving, panning around to see where I am. So 
it's one of the things that it requires of me uh, is to be really on top of where I am and to constantly check back and forth and have a pretty good sense of navigation uh, but also memory so it's not a very relaxing well sorry yes it is relaxing for me um, I'm up for the challenge but it's requiring quite a bit of brain work um, just to keep track because it's really easy to get lost in those big big patterns when there's so many so many symbols and places um, what I notice is that I start um, I'm improving with how I register voids and shapes so if I have a particular void in a shape, whether it's composed of two stitches or four stitches or five stitches, um, or it's a combination of a couple different shapes, then I think I'm improving with the speed at which I can find and locate those. Um, and that definitely helps. Um, so I don't always look at the, at the grid, um, but I try to find that cluster of shapes and voids, um, and that's how I find myself where I am. Some people do something called the parking method, and if I'm not mistaken, if I understand it properly, it's when you stitch 10. 10 by 10 squares at a time. Um, and then you move on to the next one, the next one, and the next one. And in that case, you don't need to travel around too much. You just need to know where to park your thread for the next upcoming one. Let's see. But I like. Um, oh, something happened here. I like the freedom, I like just cruising around, but I also notice that if I have too much freedom, um, then I have to choose where to go. And I think that takes, um, that takes energy. I'm not sure if anyone heard about this concept of decision fatigue. Um, there's just a number of decisions and different people have different thresholds um, but just a number of decisions that we can make in a single day and so if you have to decide which color do you want to pick up next well you might run out of your decision capacity for the day just on the floss. Okay, I got a little bit too chatty. I'm trying to find what did I do. So under this one, there's the three. One here. I don't think I did this once. Two, three. Yeah, I don't think I did those. Almost at the end. Yeah. Yes. Here it is. Well, there are just two diagonal lines of the same color appearing twice, and I wasn't sure if I did the first one and the second one or just the first one. Just confirmed cross reference that this also should be this color as well. This is it for today. That is about 50 minutes of stitching and chatting in the middle. So I'm going to secure this one with a pin stitch. 
and then take it out from the front and then so when I snip snip my leftovers kind of like pull a little bit at it so there's a little bit of that tension and I cut it and it bounces backwards and then it folds out on the other side um, so I prefer that and let me just clear out the pattern so let's take a look sorry about the glare I have an IKEA lamp so we're at 562 if I'm not mistaken did we start at 412 I'll uh, confirm that once I um, do the editing um, but we are almost at 16,000 stitches with 8.61% not sure if that means anything to you but if you look at the picture um, there's the corner if I zoom a little bit closer you can see the page breaks so we've been working on this area right here and just as promised we'll show you the back so you'll probably be able to see my stand at the moment so this stand is just straight poles with arms extending so there's nothing clamping um, but what I like about it is that I can rotate things really quickly so here's the back um, so as you can see that's curled up from the previous work uh, but where's that big stretch that we did today I think it's this one right here I'm not sure if you can see it so it already got pinned with another uh, stitch right here so I'm quite happy with how this is turning out um, so I tend to go upwards or wherever the color takes me um, because not everything goes upwards sometimes things go sideways well not that kind of sideways <laughs> but <laughs> to the side um, and this is what the back looks like so here again here's where we at um, and I'm um, glad that you joined me today and I hope to see you next time. I hope you had a good stitching session as well and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye everyone!